John Marilyn, go right ahead, sir. Good. Um, so I heard that, well, Kate is not in because of his arm, but um, I wanted to ask a question about something that he said earlier I saw on his YouTube channel. Wait, he said, wait, 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 wait. What, what's your name again? Yeah. I'm sorry. John. John, okay. John. So you, you're calling this program and asking me a question about something that Caden said on one of his videos. I'm not sure if I'll yeah, be able to provide you a good answer, but go right well, ahead. What's well, your question? I guarantee you agree with him on this, but whatever. But um, he said that no country could succeed or could be, I guess, economically prosperous based on liberal policies. Do you agree with him on that? No country could be successful based on liberal policies. For or economically prosperous. Economically prosperous. For the most yes. part, yes, I, I agree with that. I think that the basic tenets and principles of, of conservative economics and the free market system and capitalism are very, very uh, successful. Now, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that there's other parts of the world that have more... Um, are, are more uh, left-leaning when it comes to the economy, more liberal-leaning that have had relative success. But I believe that if if we adopt more principles of capitalism and of the free market system, then that will lead to the maximum amount of success as a nation can possibly get. So do you think that the market, capitalism, should be totally free, though? If, for example, in countries where... Do I where think the free market system is, should be free? What I mean by that is, do you think that regulations, uh, certain standards that businesses need to apply by, do you think that they are a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, certainly you may agree that some are needed, workplace uh, safety standards and things like that. But in terms of things like regulating the banks or um, placing laws into... So what make you're really sure asking, John, what you're really, you ask, what you're really asking me, John, is whether or not putting your foot on the throat of the private sector is a good thing. Do I have that about right? No, that's not right at all. Because, for example... Is that not what regulations do, John? Say that again? Is that not what regulations do? Let me, let me explain no, to you. No, that's not let, what regulations me, do. Oh, it's absolutely what regulations do. Let me explain okay, to you my... How, John! Well, point, well, no, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Listen to me. Let me explain to you my position on regulations. Okay. I believe that some in the free market system, as other economic systems, are important. Say that again? I believe that some are important. Now, going off of uh, the view of our founding fathers, and I don't know if you've okay. read history or not, the founding fathers believed that when it comes to the economy, mm -hmm. the government should be mostly out of it. That is not interfering with the business of the private sector. That is not regulating the snot out of uh, coal companies and automobile companies and things of that nature. The, the, the founding fathers believed uh, in, in regulations that help uh, promote the capitalist system, help promote uh, the free market system, uh, and uh, Basically, regulations that are not extensive. Some are necessary, I agree with you on that, but not to the extent of which Obama has been issuing them. Well, now go ahead here's and, where and I, get on with your. Well, here's where I disagree, about. though. Yes, yes, yes. If companies, and I'm not talking about like, you know, mom and pop shops that are just trying to get by, they're just trying to, you know, stay above water, they shouldn't be scrutinized, placed, you know, have so many different taxes and everything. I agree with you on that. But in terms of companies like gigantic corporations like Citibank, Walmart, all those companies, they have consistently proven and showed that their main goal is to only produce as much profit as possible Regardless oh my God, oh my done. God, John, God forbid a business wants to create as much profit as possible. Those yeah, damn people who work for money, Walmart, John, hold on a minute, let me ask you something, John, hold on a minute, let me ask you something. We had to turn them down for a minute. John, why Walmart? What did Walmart ever do to you? It, I'm sorry, you're... 
audio isn't really that good over my phone. Can you say that again? I said, what did Walmart ever do to you, John? What, what's this utter contempt for Walmart of which you Because speak? of what Walmart pays yes. their employees, I and you... Yes. Or I don't, I don't know how old you are, but... How old are me, you? Me, my parents... I'm 18. Oh, okay. Me, my parents, my neighbors, we have to pay for their welfare. We have to pay for it. For now, whose Walmart, welfare? They could... I mean, did you even see... They have food wait, 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 John. Who's well? What are you talking about? To pay about? for their own food because they don't get paid enough money for it. John, I... I a company should not be setting up charity drives John. for their own employees just because they don't want to pay them a living John. wage. John. Look, in countries where... Let me finish. In countries well, I don't where, know what you're talking about. Uh, I, 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 I have... What do you... We have to pay for whose welfare? What are you even... What are you talking about? Where do you think they get the money for their me- uh, to, for their welfare? Where do you think their welfare checks come from? Are you it's still talking about Walmart? Money the government prints up and mails to them. We have to pay for it. Are you still talking about Walmart? Yeah, I'm talking about wa- not just Walmart, but big companies like Walmart. So the employees of Walmart, we have to pay for their welfare. We have to pay for it. You, I mean, people complain about us having. All right. To well, welfare is a different. Welfare. Well, welfare. Okay. Well, welfare is a different uh, uh, topic. I, I believe in welfare reform, but that's not what we're talking about. You said that you don't like Walmart because they're a big corporation. You believe in regulating them because they make a lot of profit. Now, let me ask you this. No, it's not because they make. I don't believe in regulating them because they make. That's a what lot you of said. Google makes a lot of profits too, but they are actually well-run. Go- or I'm not government, but well-run business that pays their workers very high wages. They don't try and uh, skirt the system. Well, they do, but not nearly as much as Walmart does. Listen, the six, there's, I think, John, I believe there's six. John, you're, wait, you're going on, back on what you said here. And I'll let you finish, but I'm going to bring up my point right after you're done. So go ahead. Spit it out. Okay. There's, I believe, six owners of Walmart. Or there's six, it's the Walton family. They own Walmart. Six of them all together own just themselves, I believe, as much money as the bottom 40% of the United States. Six people. Now, you could argue that, yes, they are a massive business, one of the biggest in the entire world, and they earn that money. But I believe that a business that makes Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars every year should pay their workers, the people who make their business possible. You can agree with me that without the people who work at Walmart, their company would die. It would no longer be in existence. That they should pay them a wage where they do not need to set up food drives at their business to where people have to donate food to them because they cannot afford it. All right, so why don't I mean, we, so John, then why don't they? Why don't we just raise the minimum wage? Why don't we just do that? Get on board with the Obama train. How about that one? Well, here, well, explain to me why Australia's economy hasn't collapsed when their minimum wage is sixteen dollars an hour. Their unemployment rate is lower than it is here, and also people who's minimum wage? What con- Hold on, John, I'm 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 getting a headache. Okay, what did you what did you say? Whose economy? What country? Australia. Australia. That's just the first that came to my I can name many other countries that have higher minimum wage than us, plus have lower unemployment rates. Well, the CBO just came People out with are, the CBO just came out with a report that said if Obama gets his way and the minimum wage, listen to me, jobs, right? don't interrupt me. Okay, I'm not going to stand for that. Listen to me, I'm educating you. If the CBO just came out with a report that said, and this is one of many reports that have been released, the CBO said that if the, Obama got his way and raised the minimum wage. By executive action, by the way, defying the Constitution, but that's another topic. Um, if they got their way and the minimum rage, wage was raised, 500,000 jobs would be lost, according to the CBO. I've also seen numbers where over a million jobs would be lost if the minimum wage was raised. Now, going back to your point on Walmart, who, what the hell uh, place does the government have to say, oh, Walmart needs to pay their employees more because they make so much money. That's not the reason 
They need to Does the government have a role in doing that, John? That's about what I'm saying. No, you're also, getting confused. Way, I'm going to bring this up real fast. It is not unconstitutional for the president to ex- issue an executive action raising the minimum wage for new federal workers. They're federal workers. Technically, they are under his jurisdiction. He can do that. Okay? I would suggest that you look up this a little more because I'm... It's kind of annoying. Hey, pal, pal, pal don't talk action. down to me, all right? I'll, I'll crush you like the grape that you are, pal. You know what, jerk? Who are you to say that I don't know what I'm talking about? I know a hell of a lot of what I'm talking about, John. As a matter of fact, I know all about these executive orders. You're gone, John. John, you don't understand what the hell you're talking about. You don't understand the threats of tyranny. You don't understand what Obama's doing to this country. You don't understand that he cannot dictate this way. You don't understand that just because he has a damn phone and a damn pen that he can suddenly work like a dictator, go around Congress and raise the minimum wage. He can't do this, John. No, he, cannot do this. he can't get out of here. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that pissed me off. A drone. Oh, this Obama can do this. He has the power to sign these executive orders. He has the power to go around Congress. Then he talks down to me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Ugh. All right. I need to go uh, calm myself. I'll be right back. Somebody had to say it. <clears throat> well, that was, that was uh, interesting. I haven't dealt with a liberal like that in quite some time now. I asked for it, folks, didn't I? I, I mean, at the beginning of the show, I asked for it. I asked you liberals to call in, and one did. And I got pissed off because the guy doesn't understand. Notice when I gave him the fact that raising the minimum wage to $10.10 would kill over a million jobs, didn't really care. He just went on and said, well, you know, Obama has the constitutional authority to do that. Actually, he doesn't. I'm reading from an article here. I found this during the commercial break. Congress has made its will regarding the minimum wage for federal contractors abundantly clear in four separate statutes. The Service Contract... Act, the Davis-Bacon Act, the Walsh-Healy Act, and the Fair Labor, Labor Standards Act. Under those statutes, the minimum wage for many, if not most, employees of federal contractors is the prevailing minimum wage for employees in the specific job classification in the locality where the work is to be performed. Therefore, if Obama got his way and signed this executive order raising the minimum wage, not only would he be in violation of the separation of powers, but he'd be in, in violation of these four individual statutes. The Service Contract Act, the Davis Beacon Act, Bacon Act, rather, the Walsh Healy Act, and the Fair Labor Standards Act. It's been made clear on four separate occasions that the president does not have the authority to do this. The businesses have the authority to, to, to do this. Well, Walmart makes so much money, so they need to pay their they need to pay their employees more. All this hate for Walmart. What, because Walmart's successful? Is that folks, is this not what I was talking about in the beginning of the program? Is this not the mentality I was describing? The utter disdain for the wealthy and the successful? Instead of praising successful corporations and businesses like Walmart, the left seeks to tear them down through high regulations, as that idiot was talking about, John from Maryland, you dummy. Through high regulations and a forced increase in the minimum wage. Factor Talk Radio. 